Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial on financial modelling. In this tutorial, we'll be looking at how to build a financial model for an online marketplace. Marketplace is a place where different sellers list their products and buyers come to buy the products. In other words, the online marketplace is a website where sellers will list the products that they want to sell and buyers will see those products and purchase those products from there. We're talking about a company like Amazon or eBay, Lazada or Flipkart, or Alibaba, which has become quite famous due to various options and service quality to buyers and sellers both. Various online retail companies have various business models. Here, in this case, we're talking about a business model where 100% of the goods will be sold by outside sellers, as in, the company will not sell any of its own products. Amazon, for example, sells its own products also, but eBay does not sell its own products. It sells products which are listed by other sellers. We're talking about PR marketplace model, where the company does not own any inventory. Let's look at more details about this company. The company is based out of one of the developing Asian countries. The company will have a financial year end at the 31st of March each year. The company provides online marketplace where sellers list and sell their products. The total value of the products sold in the marketplace is called gross merchandise value, GMV, it's known as GMV or gross merchandise value. The value of all the products sold on the platform is the gross merchandise value. Gross merchandise value is not the revenue of the company, especially for a marketplace company, wherein the company is not selling any of its own products. The gross merchandise value is not its revenue, it's only its value of products sold. On these products sold, the company will be earning some fees, some commission, that is the revenue of the company. Let's look at what will be the revenue for a company like this. Here, we're considering four streams of revenue. There can be a couple more streams of revenue, but broadly this is how a marketplace charges or earns its revenue. There is a subscription fee. Basically, any seller wanting to list its products on the website will have to pay a subscription fee. Subscription fees will basically be the number of sellers into the subscription fee charge per seller. Number of sellers times subscription fee per seller. Let's say the marketplace is charging $10 per seller and it has 50,000 sellers. Then the total revenue will be 50,000 multiplied by the number of sellers. Then there's a closing fee. Basically any product which is sold is considered closed. It's like a transaction closed. Any product which is sold on the marketplace will attract a closing fee. But sometimes because the value of the product is very low, paying a closing fee for such low value products doesn't make sense or is not beneficial to the seller. In that case, what the marketplace company will say is, you pay me a closing fee only for the products which are worth more than X amount. Here, any product or order which has an order value of more than $5 will attract a closing fee. Then there is a third stream of revenue, which we are considering, which is commission. Commission will be charged on all products sold on the website. It'll be a commission, the rate of commission. The rate of commission will differ on the category of products. For example, electronics, which are high value products, will probably have a lower commission rate. Fashion, clothing, apparel, these categories will have a higher commission rate. So it depends on which category. Each category will have a different commission rate, depending on the category you're talking about. The commission revenue will be calculated. It will be the commission rate of that category into gross margin value, excluding the discount and returns. Commission rate times GMV, excluding discount and excluding return. Obviously, if goods are returned, it will not attract a commission and the commission is charged on excluding the discount price. If let's say the product is worth $100, but you're giving a discount of $20, then the net, excluding the discounted value of the product, is 80. So the commission will be charged on the $80 and not on the $100. Then the fulfillment fees. What do we mean fulfillment? Fulfillment is basically the shipping and warehousing costs. Sometimes the company also offers fulfillment services. Any product which are listed, you can send to the company's warehouse and then the company will ensure storing and the product for some time, let's say 30 days or 60 days, and then ship the product when it's sold. That's called fulfillment services. Most of big online retail companies also provide fulfillment services. How is fulfillment fee charged? As a percentage of fulfillment service charged on GMV, gross merchandise value. That is usually charged. The percentage is usually calculated based on the weight of the product and the volume of the product. 
Calculating all of that will become a little complicated. That's the reason we're going with simple percentage of fulfillment fees method. For the purpose of financial modeling, I don't think we need to get into so much details of how fulfillment fees is calculated. A percentage of GMV should work fine for our purpose. Gross merchandising value of fulfilled goods multiplied by the fulfillment fee plus now the fulfillment charges are not only for sending the goods to the purchaser, but when the goods are returned. The fulfillment fees will be charged on the return of the goods as well. It will be the fulfillment fees, gross merchandise value of fulfilled goods into fulfillment fees, plus gross merchandise value of goods returned multiplied by the fulfillment fees. GMV of fulfilled goods times fulfilled fees plus GMV of goods returned times fulfillment fees. That is the fourth stream of revenue that we're talking about. Let's see one other cost. There is a technology cost. Obviously, it's a website you have to maintain. There'll be so many people coming and listing their products. There will be so many people purchasing the product. The technology should be able to support to and fro of the product, plus the payment gateway and all other things. Technology cost is one of the most important cost. Then there's a fulfillment cost also. So maintaining the warehouse, shipping, having drivers, having people at the warehouse to take care of everything, there's a fulfillment cost involved. And then there is a customer acquisition retention cost. For a new online retail company, this is a major cost. This is where most of the money invested goes for a new online retail company. Acquiring a new customer and retaining the customer, they have to keep on doing that on a regular basis. So customer acquisition and retention cost. Then there's shrinkage cost. Basically, during transit, if the good is damaged, all other minor damages to the goods is basically the shrinkage cost. The next one is the transaction cost. The customer will either pay using a credit card or it will pay using cash on delivery. Whatever method of payment, it attracts costs. Credit card companies, they charge a certain percentage. Cash on delivery also attracts some costs. The transaction cost comprises of these costs. Then there's general and admin expenses. There are call center costs. There are marketing costs and head office operating expense, like the head office rent, head office people, as in the staff, and the head office and so on. Another important aspect when we're talking of building a financial model is the working capital. What comprises of the working capital of a marketplace company? The debtors. Debtors, usually all the transactions is cash transactions, so there's hardly any debtors. We will be considering a five to seven days of debtors. Inventory. Since this is a PR marketplace, we're not going to consider any inventory the company does not own and does not sell its own goods. So this will be zero inventory company. Creditors. Usually it takes 10 to 15 days for the money to reach the creditor. We're considering 15 to 20 days of creditor days. Then there'll be other current assets and other current liabilities which will be calculated as a percentage of sales and expense. Another important aspect is the capex. The capex will comprise of furniture and fixtures. Furnitures and fixtures will basically be majorly of the warehouse. The expansion capex will be based on square feet of the warehouse. Then the transportation equipment, obviously, as in when the sales increase or as in when the GMV increases. The transportation equipment requirement will also increase. Therefore, we will base it as a percentage increase in sales. Then the software development costs, maintaining the website, the technology cost which we're considering is the expense, is the cost with which we're expensing in each year. But there's also a software development cost or technology cost which we capitalize. Again, this will be calculated as a percentage of sales because as in when your sales increases, the traffic on the website increases. You need to upgrade your website or technology to that extent. That's why as a percentage of sales. This is broadly all the important aspects of the financial model. We'll start with building the financial model in an Excel, and then we have assumptions listed over here. We will be looking at these assumptions, putting these assumptions into Excel, and building the financial model. In case you have any questions, queries, or doubts, feel free to send us an email or contact us. Thank you for your patience, and see you soon in the next tutorial. Have a nice day.